Kuzo Zankola, my name is Thai and it is my absolute joy to bring to you a very special episode of Her Story Season 2. You have welcomed her into your homes, you've listened to her, you've waited to hear from her. It is my absolute honor to bring to you Her Excellency Limpo Dasho Dichinwangmo. First of all, Tashi Delila on receiving the red scarf from His Majesty himself, la, one of the highest honors mm. for a Bhutanese civilian. We were so proud of you, la, watching you on TV, and we continue to be proud of you. La. Um, I have to say, la, I feel like I know you because <laughs> I've seen you on my TV, especially during the lockdowns. But I have often wondered how it must have been for you, la, because you also have a family, you have your loved ones, your home, mm. a whole side to you that we as an audience uh, didn't get to see and even consider perhaps. So uh, starting off from there, la, how was it for you, your personal story, your lockdown story? La? Um, I think my, my, if, you, if I say my lockdown story, um, I think um, as, as I think many of the public were aware <laughs> yes. that uh, we ran our operation from the RBA campus. Um, uh, so that was definitely being away from home. We didn't go home. We were in a containment mode. This time, of course, was longer, so 42 days. Yes. Uh, um, I think I remember uh, on a very personal note, I remember my, uh, my son sort of uh, writing mm. a small message uh, mm. to me. Yes. Um, um, and it says, uh, thank you, Mama, for uh, saving, keeping us safe. No? So uh, it was really nice uh, to, to know that uh, he at that age uh, understood Plus. what I was doing mm. and, and, and I think um, he was very happy uh, yes. being home with his, his cousins Plus. because interestingly you know we had uh, we were supposed to have uh, one of my uh, nephew was supposed to have a birthday party so they were all sleeping over in my oh, place less. and then the next day was the lockdown oh, so he had a lot of company <laughs> <laughs> so so that that turned out quite good um, uh, but of course I think for me uh, being away from home mm. but having a very good uh, social network mm. and support at home really uh, made a huge difference yes. uh, in terms of uh, uh, my focus uh, on work mm. because I know that my son is well taken care mm. um, his grandfather's at home mm. um, my my sister is there taking care of him my nieces nephews everyone was there so he was very happy so so I think him being happy there uh, does give me a certain level of comfort um, uh, uh, to do my work and and focus exclusively on my work so. Less. Did you uh, did you have a, like a schedule uh, with him uh, that oh every day we will talk for this many hours or oh we will talk every other day? How did you manage uh, the relationship? Um, I think I think if you look at the first uh, two weeks was I was very busy, so mm. I would at least make an effort to talk to him every evening before he go to bed. Yes. So I would call around nine to ten and and sort of um, uh, say my uh, good nights and yes. you know. Um, give him an electronic hug and, <laughs> and then I think uh, towards later uh, say by the third or the fourth week I kind of stopped calling him because he would get very emotional I you know we couldn't do FaceTime because by then he would look at me and he would like have this big big tears coming out of his I eyes so then it becomes very painful um, so then I, I, I stopped calling him because mm. uh, my sister was saying don't call him he gets you know <laughs> So uh, after the third week, you know, every time I would call him, he would say, when are you coming home, you know, mm -hmm. give me the exact date, you know. Um, yeah, less, less. So uh, my uh, son is autistic, so, so this, there is a thing that we do with him, mm -hmm. that the days that I'm away, I used to put marbles uh, in, a, in, a, in a cup, and mm -hmm. I would say, okay, if I'm away for five days, I would put five marbles mm. and then he would put the, count the marbles and he would know exactly when I'm coming home. Oh, so nice. this was very different. So oh, nice. he really didn't have a sense of when I was coming mm. home. So towards the end was a bit difficult but, yes. uh, but, uh, but I think uh, for a young child I think he handled it very well I must say. Yes. I was also going to ask you about um, how your son reacted if, because did he understand the nature of your job la, and while other mothers have been were home, mm. you were away during the, both the lockdowns mm. and busy all the time. There must have been a few difficult moments. How did you 
maneuver that la I, I think definitely but uh, but if i if 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 um, you look at my son he is fairly very independent yes. um, in its thinking yes. uh, he uh, being a single mother yes. he's always used to me working yes. so this one was no different yes. uh, but this one he knew that you know i was doing something yes. for everyone yes. uh, uh, and he's a big, uh, he would follow up on, on COVID-19. Mm. And uh, uh, interestingly, he, he, he knows, he keeps an eye on the dashboard. And he started counting, you know, yeah, till we business. had fairly small numbers. Mm. When we had big numbers, then it became very difficult for mm. him. Um, I remember one incident where when we had our first COVID dead, uh, he called me and, mm. and, and he left a message on my WeChat saying, Mama, I see one in the red. <laughs> oh, so sad, Mama. I you know? So, so, so things like that. Mm. So he's, 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 he does understand what I'm doing mm. and why I'm doing. Mm. And I also try to explain to him that every time I'm away that, you know, this is what Mama has to do. And mm. he's, he's fairly good at understanding. Less. He always says, oh, Mama, we have to work. No? I less, so, less. so, so it's, it's good. I'm, I'm in that way, I think, um, I think uh, this is where that uh, caption on the Facebook uh, mm. comes out of is mm. is is he's he's a very um, understanding boy at yes. his age. Ayelas. Did he have you know like how some children have like feedbacks on you? Oh, oh you should have said that. Oh, you shouldn't have worn that. Did he have feedback on your li live telecast like after uh, your live telecast? Um, <laughs> not not really. He yes. would he would watch me oh. and um, but uh, not particular feedback Less. or say oh, you should have said this yes. or that yes. but he f whatever I say he follows very diligently Less. if I narrate a very short story I think uh, during the lockdown mm. you know uh, enclave was in the containment mode Less. and some of his friends by the third week we mm. were allowed to come out and Less. some of his friends came over and he, they said please come out let's play no? I believe he was on the on the veranda and then he was uh, <laughs> talking to his friends mm. and sorry I can not come out because I am son of the health minister mm. you know <laughs> so he, he really wanted to follow that yes and, and then, then that evening he was calling me and saying mama lockdown is not over no we cannot go out no because my father is with me so we have taken some extra precautions yeah. so he was not allowed to go out of the, the compound um, so he, he knows that um, so so whatever I say like the use of face marks hand washing he's very very diligent you know, so every time wash your hands you know mm. so so things like that I think uh, it's quite nice to see in another one of my research like, I read that you lost your mother to cancer like. yes. And that somehow has seemed to propel you onto the path that you are on right mm. now, La, because I also found out that you are a founder of a, a CSO that helps with the well-being of cancer patients called the Bhutan Cancer Society. So I just wanted to find out, La, what kind of woman was your mother La, and what kind of role did she play in your life? La? I think very strong woman, mm. I must say. Um, uh, she was very um, confident. Plus. Um, she would really very strong in her personality uh, and very strict yes. you know <laughs> so she wasn't that oh you know the mummy type so she she really at a, at a very young age I remember she would always say you know um, uh, you know you have to do your work yes. so we had chores that we had to do mm. um, and if yes. it's not done yes. we have to get it done Yes. Um, uh, no excuse, you know. Yes. So she was, she was very strict, for yes. which I'm, we are, I'm extremely grateful. Mm. Very particular. Mm. Um, so she was, I think, uh, in terms of personality, she was very, very strong personality. Mm. Yes. Um, uh, of course, I lost her at a very <coughs> young age. Yes. She was uh, 57, I think, oh, when we last, lost her last to cancer. Very young, very yes. young. Very yes. young. Oh, last. Do you um, see a reflection of her in you, uh, some traits of her in you? Uh, yes, I think she's <laughs> very strong headless. Uh, and I think uh, it'll be fair to say I have a little bit of that in Less. me. Yes. Um, the, the story about uh, the, the Cancer Society I remember was, uh, you know, 
uh, when she passed away and she saw when we were undergoing treatment in Calcutta during her first phase of treatment mm. uh, she saw a lot of Bhutanese there suffering mm. uh, from from cancer and, and and she said it's so difficult and mm. so hard mm. uh, and you know I wish we have uh, an organization who looks after the well-being of mm. these people because these were coming from every corner of Bhutan mm. um, and I, I just listened to that uh, thing. Mm -hmm. I never took it to my heart, mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but when I actually lost her uh, two, two years after that, uh, mm -hmm. then I realized I must do something about it. Yes. Um, so, so I would keep a proportion of my uh, income from mm -hmm. the consultancy work I would do mm -hmm. uh, to start this CSO. Yes. Um, uh, so I would always you know, keep a little bit of fun aside so that I can start the CSO yes. uh, and then finally uh, I got around uh, doing it uh, mm. because I knew that if I don't do that mm. knowing my mother mm. I'm sure she's watching over there with the, with the, with the register saying oh the Chen's not done this you know yes. <laughs> so, so, so uh, and, and I really wanted to sort of through this uh, pay, pay my, my tribute to my mother uh, yes. for bringing us up yes. uh, with so much love care mm. Uh, and the discipline, mm. which is which is so important. Yes, yes. Um, so, so when I look at now, as a kid, I think we complained a lot about it. <laughs> but now, when I look at it, um, I'm extremely grateful mm. uh, because I think uh, it's it's that discipline, mm. um, the values mm. uh, that she has taught us, uh, mm. has made us who we are today. Less, so. la, less. How uh, old were you, la, when you lost your mother? Oh, um, twenty-three. I just finished my Plus, undergraduate, I think. So very imp an impressionable age, more like yes, where you really needed yes. a woman figure in your life True. to gu guide True. you. True. But because she was a strong personality, she yes. already had made a mark in more yes. Less. What type of family life, uh, childhood would you say you had? La? Because from my numerous readings on you, la, mm. I'm uh, gathered that you seem to have always kind of known what you wanted. La. You're always in health. Uh, uh, the health sector or some mm. governance or some reform mm. and I was just thinking to myself how synchronized everything worked out for mm. you la. and it seemed like you always knew what you wanted to do mm. was that the case like did you always know what you wanted to do from very early on uh, not not really actually Plus. you know um, <laughs> fair to say I think a bit a bit a bit confused uh, <laughs> um, of course I um, I was not uh, the very quiet type, I Plus. must say. Um, mm. I was fairly naughty mm. uh, in the sense I would, um, I would, I would pick up a fight with anybody. Plus. Uh, very strong-headed, and yes. um, if I want to get, if I want to do something, I would go all out uh, to do it. Yes. And and even at a very young age, um, I really didn't care about the the typical role of what a girl should do. Um, I remember this was um, early on when taekwondo was just picking up oh, less, and less. my brother used to go for taekwondo classes mm. and I insisted that I want to go mm. and that time it was only Madam Jimmy Om who was the first uh, Bhutanese woman who, who actually um, uh, uh, took up taekwondo less, less. And, and I really wanted to be uh, mm. in taekwondo I really wanted to do taekwondo and it just against I think during that time against all odds you know mm. like women don't do that girls don't do that um, you know you have to do some household chores mm. and, and I, I remember I used to sometimes sneak in sneak out and, and follow my brother and you know <laughs> every time my brother would go around and I would follow him and mm. I used to ride bikes I used to ride motorcycle mm. you know so, so very uh, atypical wow. girl life um, Less, uh, uh, I, I don't think so. I was the the Barbie doll kind of <laughs> uh, person Less, <laughs> to be honest I would be climbing up the trees climbing up the fence doing Less. gymnastic you know Less. Um, never the dainty kind Less. Uh, uh, but but of course, having said that, um, in terms of wanting to do what I want to do, mm. I think you know when I left uh, the country, I was 19 years old. Plus, uh, so there was a lot of peer pressure. I mm. took uh, bio uh, bioscience. Plus. I took both biology and math. Um, so there was a lot of pressure mm. for you to become a doctor. Mm. You know, <laughs> Less, you know yes. how, how I think probably during that time it yes, was such yes. a noble profession and it is a noble profession no doubt yes. but a lot of societal pressure even mm. even even both my parents wanted mm. me to become a doctor Less. Uh, so when I got a scholarship and uh, the, then I looked at the course um, mm. then I said okay I'm going to do cardiovascular mm. I'm going to do five years of that mm. and then do my medical doctorate 
Wow. So, so, so the goal from when I left the country was really uh, nine medicine. years ahead medicine. in medicine. Last medicine. Um, and then when I actually did that, mm. I hated being last. going to hospital. To be honest, last. I really hated it. Last. And it, it took a while to 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 confront because mm. all mm. along I I was sort of mentally prepared mm. to become a doctor. Mm. Um, and then I even took this uh, grueling exam um, called MCAT. Um, uh, that takes about four or five hours the exam. Last. And people prepare for this exam, you mm. know, way ahead mm. in their pre-med. Mm. Uh, and I did that also. Last. I got through fairly mm. good um, mm. and, and had, uh, was ready to go and Last. get my medical doctorate in, in cardiology. Last. Then I did some internship in some of the hospitals. I tried multiple hospitals. Mm. I was with Children's Hospital in Boston. Then I was with um, uh, Brigham and Women's Hospital looking at women's health. And mm. with Children's Hospital, I was with the cardiology department there. Then I was with Beth Israel Hospital looking at geriatric care. And none of these mm. were of my interest. <laughs> Less. Then finally I decided Less. it's not my cup of tea. Mm. I better back out now mm. than wait, you know, 30 years yes, and then say, oh, this is something I hate. Mm. Yes, you know? yes. And then, then I told my, I remember telling my father that time saying, I think this is not my cup of tea and I would like to explore something else. Mm. Of course, they were a little uh, disappointed, <laughs> yes. you know, because yes. because the Bhutanese parents always, you know, we like to have yes. children who become doctors, doctors. noble profession, you know, yes, la. all that. Uh, but of course, nevertheless, mm. uh, very supportive of, yes. of my choice. Less. So at, at a very last minute mm. sort of a thing, I said, OK, let me try my destiny. I'm going to apply to the best school in the country in in in, in the United States mm. and and globally rated school mm. if i get in mm. this my destiny is to become a public health Less. if i don't get in i'll go and do medicine mm. so okay. so very different okay. no. Less, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> because everybody would say medicine would be their first mm. option so i would say, i i said i'm going to look at mm. public health mm. if i don't get into public health okay i have a backup plan mm -mm. is to do my medicine so i applied mm. i applied i came back to bhutan mm. And I waited, mm. and then came September. Boom! I was, it, I uh, got through. It was destiny, uh, la. <laughs> yes, yes. Then I realized, oh, mm, it's good because all my friends in US they said, oh no, 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 no. You should apply to five schools, six schools, different categories of schools. Mm. Uh, uh, you apply to the best school in the world, and and if you don't get in, then you know, it's, yes, uh, you must have three options. You know. <laughs> yeah. But I just said, okay. I, I, I just don't have the time. I'm just going to apply to one. If I get in, if I get in, I get in. If I don't, I'm going to go back and do my medicine. Less. So, so, but I got in. Mm. So, so I think a combination of luck. Mm. Um, uh, but I won't say I, I exactly knew where I want to be. Less. But after public health, I knew exactly where I want to be. Really, like you felt <laughs> that this is my calling. Yes, I felt like okay, this is my world. Uh, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm passionate about. Less. Um, this is what uh, keeps me going. Less. And and I don't mind. Even today, I think uh, having taken this responsibility, mm. I really don't mind getting up and having sleepless night and yes. getting up every morning and going to office yes. because this is something that I'm very passionate about. Less, so less. I always tell people that uh, just follow your passion. Less, no? less. Because in the long run, you don't yes. want to drag your self to work. Yes, you want to be excited true, uh, true, to go la. to work. Did you have like a moment when you knew, like you said, you felt at home instantly. Uh. There Was there like a specific moment when you're like, ah, yes, it makes sense. I've, I had a nagging feeling that uh. this is, the medicine world was maybe not for me. This moment in time confirms it. Did you have a specific moment like that? Uh, I think two moments. Um, one was when I uh, went to Central America to do my um, do a small project mm. there um, in, uh, in Belize. Less. Um, and I was working with uh, HIV positive uh, communities Less. there. Um, and, and really working on, on advocacy because mm. that time there was a lot of reservation on, on uh, condom use, for mm. example. Um, mm. And I took it upon myself as a challenge uh, mm. to do an aggressive um, campaign mm. uh, for HIV prevention. Yes. Um, and, and of course, my thesis was also on, on HIV prevention oh, less. and, and um, how the HIV epidemic has evolved uh, globally. Yes. 
Um, so I think they was working with um, HIV positive children. Mm. Um, um, I think that really, um, I really felt like I was making a huge difference there. Mm. Um, and, and said, you know, if you, if you focus on public health work, it's, it's yes, I mean, if you are a clinical doctor, you treat one person. Mm. But if you focus on public health work, mm. then it has a wider impact yeah. Uh, on the society yes. and, and the long-term impact of public health intervention. Um, so this is where I, 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 I fell in mm. love with really designing public health program. Um, and, and then of course the similar experience, um, I wanted to do three months here in Bhutan. So I came back and I was interning with WHO at that time. Mm. And Bhutan that time was writing uh, the first um, uh, grant uh, for WHO, uh, for the uh, Global Fund. Grant yes. for HIV, yes. and and because I had little knowledge about HIV, having worked, uh, and then my own interest in HIV/AIDS, um, then we started uh, doing some work here. Uh, so this is this is what it is, I think. Yes. So uh, so even today, um, mm. uh, so my one of my commitment is is elimination of mother to child transmission. Yes. So which means really achieving zero mother to child transmission. No child uh, should be born with HIV in today's world, where interventions are available. Mm. where treat, um, uh, pre uh, preventive measures are readily available. Mm. So to me, a child born with HIV in today's world, mm. in 21st century, is really unacceptable. Yes. So, so even for Bhutan, we mm. are aiming that we can achieve this yes. uh, zero or uh, elimination soon. Yes. The, I have to say, la, on a side note, whenever you speak about your son mm. and your public health and uh, of your mother, there is a certain calmness and a certain energy la, that is not lost. Mm. It seems very calm and centered and you know exactly what you're doing. And it seems to bring you a certain kind of perhaps a purpose, la, is it? La? I feel like that when you talk about these three things. Definitely, definitely. Yes. I think, I think uh, with my son, I think um, I, I probably echo every mother mm -hmm. <laughs> all over the world yes. um, uh, in terms of wanting the best for your children. Yes. Uh, and um, and as a public health, um, I think I think we have to be very uh, focused mm. uh, uh, in the position that I am in right now uh, because it's term based. Mm. So uh, we have to be very strategic in in yes. saying okay, what we want to achieve. Yes. Uh, so all along, the focus for me has been um, women and children, yes. women and children. And I am of the belief that if you invest in our women and children. Um, then this is an investment that will have uh, greater, uh, the greatest dividend for future. Less. So nation cannot progress without investing in our women and children. Plus, you're doing some incredible work la, and I can sense that you are just beginning. And um, I would like to know, la, because for you to do something like this, you need to have strong cheerleaders. So who is your mm. biggest cheerleader la, in your life? I think, um, I would say my father, Less. my father, Less. Um, the sacrifices he has made. Less. Um, we have a huge, I have a huge respect for him. Less. He lost his wife at a very young age. Uh, my father is younger to my mother. My father was barely 54 oh, when Less. we lost our mother. Uh, but he took upon himself to mm. raise all of us. Um, and How he many had, uh, five of us, Less. five Less of us in the family. Um, uh, living five and yes. and he really you know he he sort of took the responsibility of both uh, a mother mm. and a father yes. and especially for my youngest sister mm. uh, who when my mother died was very young um, so so he really uh, took up this role of fulfilling mm. not just the fatherly mm. responsibility of mm. providing, ensuring that mm. you have a safe environment to grow, mm. but the love and care I and, and yes. giving directions. Yes. And, and, and my father is someone, um, uh, you know, even when we were campaigning, mm. um, my father would never go out with me. So generally, yes. you know, the trend when mm. we are campaigning that your parents are always following you, no? Eh, your parents less, will yeah. go and campaign for you yes, and yes. your relatives and all. Rally people around. Yes, and, and somehow my father never did that. Less. And and as I went around, and I'm new to politics, less. so as I went around and mm. visited communities and people would say, mm. oh, you're Pemsering's daughter, oh, I've known him. Mm. Oh, he should come around, you know, mm -hmm. he knows a lot of people than you do because mm. you're, you're very young. Mm. 
Um, so then I, one day I came home and I asked my father, I said, um, Appa, I think it um, looks like you should go and campaign with me. <laughs> <laughs> Plus. Um, and then he didn't say anything. And after one day, uh, after two days, I think, he came to me and he said, um, you have taken the responsibility of, of uh, to, to run, to serve the country. Plus. So you must have the capacity to shoulder that responsibility. So you cannot push your responsibility mm. to, to, to me, for yes. example. So he didn't say it that way, mm -hmm. but that was his intention. Yes. Saying that if you pick up, Rangi uh, de rangi me di bago say mm. in that line Lass. he said no oh, oh. Lass, oh. Lass. no yes, yes, in Lass. the middle of uh, carrying the load <laughs> you, you cannot, cannot say I cannot carry the load please come and help me yes yes so he mm. was saying you must assess Lass. Lass. some tough love in yes <laughs> very tough love uh, but 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 mm. a lot of wisdom there in Bella. and 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 he's always been that uh, type I think. Mm. Uh, man of few words, mm. um, and and to him, mm. uh, his children are his world. Yes. Um, he's very content taking care of, you know, my son with playing mm. with uh, his grandchildren. Mm. You know, uh, yes. praying. So so yes. so we are extremely grateful. So I think I think he plays a huge role in my life in yes. in in giving me the confidence that mm. I have, the directions. And the guidance and and I draw a lot of inspiration from him, uh, the sacrifices he has made uh, mm. for us, yes. um, so that we can thrive. So yes. I remain, I think, uh, extremely grateful. Yes. <laughs> um, what would you say is the most challenging part of your life, love, professionally and personally? Because we will have a lot of young girls and women watching mm. this show, and. Uh, knowing that you also had some challenges mm. makes them believe that maybe they can also overcome the challenges that they have perhaps. So what would you say Lau, was the most challenging part of your life? I think, you know, there are, as, as a woman, mm. uh, there are certain expectations, uh, societal expectation, parents' expectation, relatives' expectations, mm. you know, because they expect you to be the first one if somebody is sick, yes. some first one to take care of them, or yes. first one to offer condolences, or first mm. one to be there next to the bedside. Uh, and, and it's not that you cannot do, mm. but I think then you have other priorities. Yes. And, and, and juggling that expectation with your own priorities, mm. um, so that I feel is the most challenging uh, part for me. Plus. Because there are automatically being uh, mm. a, a, a woman, mm. uh, there's an automatic expectation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if your father is sick, they expect uh, that you as a daughter mm. will be the first one. You know, yes, but then sometimes yes. you can't meet that. Yes. Um, so, so, so things like that. Um, so I think juggling those two, mm. uh, for me, um, I feel it's, it's, uh, it's very challenging. Less. Because uh, generally with the, 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 uh, the place I am in right now, um, I, it will be fair to say I really have um, very little control over my schedule. <laughs> <laughs> we believe so, you. Laugh. So, so you know, we, we people show up in your house and they yes. expect you to be there generally, mm. um, as a as a woman. As mm. uh, uh, but then I'm not there. Mm. So people say, oh, Katina de mino na mo adugo ba te no. So so things like that. Yes. So those those are I think uh, I'm sure it will change with times. Mm. But but for me again, I mean having a good. Mm, uh, network of, of supporters, mm. my sisters, my my mm. older sister, my younger sister, all sort of helping mm. out. Mm -hmm. uh, that does make your life a bit easier. Less so I less. can say, oh, my sister, older sister will go instead of me. <laughs> and it's something that uh, younger can do. I can just pass on the bucket to the younger less. one and say, please, <laughs> you can do it. Less, less. A tribe of women, more less. Yes. <laughs> uh, that brings me to my next question, La, um, because um, I wanted to ask you about women in the workforce, La, mm. because generally, usually, the primary caregivers at home are women, La, but at the same time, you're also expected to perform competitively with the other gender at the workforce. La. Mm. So how, what, do you see certain things that we can do to ensure that women also succeed at work? La? Mm. I think that's a, that's a, that's a very uh, it's an excellent question, I must say. Um, uh, for me, if if I were to share my personal story, yes. because the field that 
I am in, mm. um, and what I have studied, the skills I have, and the competencies I have, um, it's, a, it's a perfect match. Yes. Um, now, in cases where it's not a perfect match, uh, there is a huge trajectory of learning that mm. has to happen. And, and that, that does create uh, certain barriers. Mm. Now, for example, say if I'm heading, I don't know, best would be work and human settlement mm -mm. portfolio. Mm. I have no clue about the construction mm. sector. Yes. So that would require me to have a huge trajectory of learning mm. and say, okay, what is engineering design? And knowing myself, I know I'm a, I'm a uh, very detail oriented. Um, yes. So I'm, I'm of a belief that the devil lies in the detail. <laughs> yes. So I'm very microscopic. Mm. Um, so, so I think that would put a lot of pressure on me. Mm. Yes. And, and, and you see that um, in, in Bhutan, for example, mm. Um, there are not many women in, in that position. Yes. Um, mm. But when we ask why, then mm. it's probably due to do with our education system. Mm. But uh, there is there a gross discrimination? Mm. Um, um, I would say uh, not a gross discrimination mm. per se, mm. but there are stereotypings. Mm. And this is exactly what you are um, sort of indicating to mm. is it's a typical stereotyping thinking mm. and, and, and cultural expectation mm. that you as a woman is fit for this mm. uh, and you should not be doing this. Mm. Uh, so, so things like that. Yes. But, uh, but um, having worked in many countries uh, in the region as, as international consultant, I realize uh, somehow, if you look at Bhutan, uh, we are extremely fortunate uh, mm. that as a woman, mm. you at least have an opportunity mm. to, to be who you want to be. Mm. There are certain enabling environment that mm. are in place. Mm. Um, so slowly, I, I, I look at, when I look at the future, mm. I see a lot of promise. Uh, in in Plus. young girls in Plus. schools performing exceptionally well, Plus. young professionals, young program officers in my ministry alone, Plus. exceptionally well with Plus. lot of competency, confidence, um, you know. Plus. So so I really see a very bright future Plus. for for women um, in in Bhutan um, uh, because if you look at high school performance, exceptionally well. Uh, it, if you look at uh, school enrollment, uh, mm. I mean, um, it's, it's almost, mm. I think, if not greater, mm. almost at par 50-50 yes. at this point. So, yes. so a very bright future. Yes, la. We thank you la, for being such an exemplary role model for all our young girls and women out there. Uh, to see someone like yourself, a girl represented on TV, mm. uh, makes you believe that you too perhaps could reach there one mm. day. So what advice would you have like, for young aspiring girls, uh, be it uh, to become a politician or public health like yourself? Mm -hmm. um, I would say, I think, follow your passion. Yes. Uh, I mean, it might sound very cliche, mm. uh, but I, I, I am of the belief um, that you must follow your passion. Yes. Uh, you must follow and um, take a moment to understand what your strengths are mm. um, and, and, and then build on to it. Yes. Um, and and to me, I think uh, that uh, has been my greatest uh, asset yes. uh, to be able to follow my passion uh, yes. and and to be able to realize what my strengths are, what yes. my weaknesses are. Yes. Uh, because you know, when you reach a certain age, there are things that you can never change. Yes. And then um, I think it's better not to have that aspiration and say, okay, this is fairly something I cannot do. I, mm -hmm. I, I can never be a musician. Mm -hmm. I am very bad at drawing. Yes. I can never be an artist. <laughs> if you yes. ask me to draw anything, I, I, I'm sure that I can even draw a straight line. Uh, <laughs> so I realize that's not my cup of tea. Mm. So really finding your own cup of tea. Less, um, less. And then enjoying it less. and savoring it mm. and, and, and mm. um, be uh, happy about it and Lasla. content. Lasla. Thank you so much, La. It has been an absolute honor to have you here, La. I hope we did you justice. Thank you, La. Thank you. It's always a pleasure.
Hassan, oh, um, I would say um, three things. Um, one, he's very compassionate, uh, compassionate, very caring, um, and very sensitive. Uh, and I, I think these are the three things that I really uh, see a huge potential in him. And his smiles and his chubbiness. <laughs> Oh my God, there are so many things. Um, uh, being able to speak my mind, <laughs> um, being able to care and love, being able to cry with no prejudice, uh, being able to shed some tears, um, being able to give, uh, being able to hug someone, express your emotions. Um, and being able to find happiness in every small thing. Oh, I would say mm, my all-time favorite uh, would be Being Mortal by uh, Atul Gawande. Now this will shock you. <laughs> Very um, Justin Bieber, uh, Mistletoe. Darkness. Uh, I think my son's impression of me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is a um, double chocolate walnut brownie. <laughs> So, would you rather have telekinesis, the ability to, to move things with your mind, or telepathy, the ability to read minds? I would say I would rather have telekinesis for two reasons. One, I love rearranging and moving my things around. And sometimes I'm exhausted but then I don't like the position of that chair and, and if I don't move it, it's going to hang around in my mind and, and so I have to do it. So I, if I wish I have that kind of capacity, then I would come home from work and then if I don't like the position of the chair, then I can move it. I would not want to read somebody's mind because I think this infringement of privacy. <laughs> Would you rather be the alien that makes first contact to uh, contact be ro robotic or organic? I think organic, because moment the organic, uh, there is emotions, there is life. The robotic is, is very mechanical, so being an emotional person, organic. Thank you for being with us. Do remember you're smart, you're beautiful and your story needs to be heard. Take care.